Hi everybody, my name is Jonathan Davis and welcome to today's webinar, uh, which is an introduction to Trimble Terraflex. Move to the next slide, there we go. So what we'll cover today, first the speakers uh, will introduce ourselves, then we'll look at uh, Trimble GIS technology in a slightly broader sense, then we'll run through an overview of the Terraflex solution and then have a look at some example use cases before um, closing out with some questions and answers. So what I'd ask is we have a lot of people on the webinar uh, today. So rather than take people on and off mute, what I invite you to do is ask questions at any time during the webinar uh, using the the uh, question box in the in the webinar uh, go to webinar tool here. So so please just feel free to enter questions uh, in that text box as we go through. And uh, between Dan and myself, who are presenting today, we'll try to keep track of those uh, as they come in and, and answer what we can, and then we'll we'll run through them uh, at the end as well, or at least as many as we can. Uh, but if if we don't get your question, then you can be sure that we'll um, you'll get an email in the next next couple of days uh, with some more information. So with that, um, just to introduce the speakers, again, my name's Jonathan Davis. I uh, work uh, for Trimble down in New Zealand in a business development role. I've worked for Trimble for about 20 years now in a, in a variety of um, roles and, and locations. And then all the way across the Pacific Ocean, um, Dan Colbert joins me. So Dan, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, Dan Colbert, I work on the uh, the sales team uh, in uh, the Americas, uh, supporting our distribution channel and, and customers on a on a technical level. So I uh, appreciate uh, the invite from Jonathan and uh, glad to get the message of Terraflex out to uh, uh, to his region. Thanks, Dan. So we'll start with a just a look at, at the broader range of technologies that are available uh, from the Trimble GIS business. And, and it ranges from sort of the classic or the more traditional tools uh, which are used to capture information about individual features uh, through some of our scanning technologies, all the way up to some of our um, vehicle mounted mobile mapping solutions, which in my mind, I often associate those technologies with more engineering um, workflows, but the technologies that are very applicable in a GIS sense as well. And they're very, very efficient at capturing a lot of information uh, very quickly. Uh, and then through the processing software, we have the ability to ex uh, automatically extract features to populate uh, a GIS database. So there's a whole range of technologies that are available. And if we look at it, for, um, in terms of the various product categories, uh, you can get a slightly better picture of the different types of technologies and, and solutions that are available. So it ranges from uh, the traditional handhelds uh, and uh, modular GNSS systems at the top. Uh, and then of course the software that, that runs on those devices. Uh, and then there are some more of our emerging technologies on the bottom there. So the last um, couple of weeks I've, I've run different webinars, one on uh, Trimble Sight Vision, which is our augmented reality solution, and then another on Trimble Catalyst, which is our uh, GNSS positioning as a service for Android devices. So hopefully some people on the webinar today have been able to join me for those sessions. But this, this view just shows it's a very, very broad portfolio and a very, very broad range of technologies that we, we can bring together uh, in this GIS space. If we look um, more at the, at the core of the GIS um, business and our mobile GIS data collection technologies, every solution in my mind really comprises of four different components. Uh, one or the, the first one is the mobile device or the handheld uh, that's being taken in the field. The second is the software that runs on that device, of course. The third is the addition of a high accuracy GNSS component if the accuracy that your device alone um, is achieving is, is not sufficient. 
And then the fourth is the delivery mechanism for the data that you've collected in the field. And that's the, the tool that you use to create the deliverables so that the data you've collected using the Trimble technology in the field can then be passed through to your chosen system of record. And the, the piece of the puzzle that we're focusing on today is the software, the Terraflex software that runs on the mobile device. So a little bit of an overview of the Terraflex software. Uh, it's Trimble's next generation GIS data collection uh, software and there are two key points around the software. One is that it leverages the cloud for data synchronization and, and also data security. Uh, and then the second is that it's very, very easy and flexible in how it can be deployed and used. So it can collect new data, uh, or there's also an inspection workflow where you can take um, already collected or already existing data from your GIS back out to the field for, for updates. It works um, online, of course, but it also works offline. Uh, it's capable of logging GNSS data for post-processing workflows. And then it works across a, a range of operating system uh, platforms as well, as we'll see on the next slide. Uh, and then the, its availability um, is, is via subscription. So those subscriptions are either monthly or annually, uh, or we can put um, multiples of those together to create uh, what we call a fixed term license for the for the software as well. So just starting with some some basics around the mobile GIS um, data collection technologies that are, are available and, and how Terraflex fits into this. So here are some of the devices that Terraflex can run on and of course there are a range of Trimble devices but an important component here is or an important um, consideration here is that Terraflex can run across Windows, Android and iOS um, operating systems so that uh, it's very, very easy to deploy the software across a mixed fleet of devices. So if I look at some of the Trimble ones for a second, the, uh, I'll start on the on the left hand side with the Trimble TDC 600. That is um, a, well, it's a, it's a rugged device with a sunlight readable screen and very, very high battery capacity. But for all intents and purposes in this instance, it can be compared with a, with a regular cell phone. Um, the next one is the one I really wanted to put the spotlight on, which is the Trimble TDC 150, which is what we call an integrated handheld. And that means that it has the, the mobile phone component integrated with a high accuracy uh, GNSS antenna and receiver uh, in a similar way that uh, we have done over the years with the Geo Explorer brand. The Trimble TDC 150 is the next generation product that follows on from, from the Geo Explorer uh, and is running the Android operating system and then of course is, is running the Terraflex software as well. Then we have some, um, some other options in the portfolio with, with larger screens that, that don't have that high accuracy GNSS integrated. And then as I already mentioned, um, the Terraflex software will run across um, you know, a range of, of devices from, from other companies as well uh, across the various operating systems that are available. Another important consideration is accuracy. So the accuracy that you'll achieve with your cell phone um, is, in my experience, about 10 metres, depending on your environment. It could be a little bit better or it could be a lot worse than that. It's about, it's about 10 metres and that's what I've um, specified here for the Trimble TDC 600. If you want to have better accuracy than what that device can achieve by itself, then there are two options. The first one is to uh, take that, that device and add an external GPS or GNSS um, system to it. And I've got a couple shown there. Uh, one is, the top one is Trimble Catalyst, which is our uh, GNSS positioning capability, uh, which is offered as a service to your Android device. And you can see the accuracy range that that, that technology offers. And then the alternative down the bottom is the Trimble R1 and R2, they are Bluetooth receivers uh, that offer a similar accuracy, 
but differ in that they fall into a more traditional uh, purchasing model of, of normally some sort of capital investment. Uh, the other alternative is on the left hand side there, which is uh, migrating or is, a, is another option, which is to, to migrate toward an integrated handheld, which again, as I've mentioned, integrates the, the mobile device with a high accuracy GNSS receiver. Uh, and for all of those folks out there that have experience with the, with the Geo Explorer uh, product lines, this is the, the updated um, integrated handheld from Trimble. The reasons why you might choose one or the other, um, the, the Geo Explorer over the years and now the TDC 150 is very popular because it is sort of one, one device that you take into the field and it's very fit for purpose. Uh, for, you know, depending on, on exactly what you're doing. The reason you might choose to go with a, a more generic mobile device and use it in combination with an external um, GNSS receiver is if you want to perhaps share uh, that high accuracy GNSS capability across a group of users, um, each, each person having their own, their own mobile device. The next few slides just show some photos of some of these different configurations. So uh, here, this gentleman is using a TDC 150 with that um, high accuracy GNSS component integrated. Uh, that he's just holding this in his hand, obviously. Uh, so, so um, depending on the configuration, he could be he could be using centimeter accuracy, or he could be using uh, one meter accuracy. The fact that it's just in his hand probably suggests to me that he's, he's probably closer to that one meter accuracy. Um, in this case, this gentleman has, is using the TDC 600 and it looks like there is no external GNSS receiver. So the accuracy that this person is achieving in this instance is probably closer to that 10 meter mark. If he wants to improve the accuracy, then he uh, might look at a setup like this. So this, in this case, uh, it's a generic device, but it's connected to an external GNSS antenna, uh, which is mounted on a backpack. And presumably, um, this person is collecting information about the tree, you know, that they're, that they're standing right beside. So uh, again, it might be half meter or meter level accuracy that, that uh, is sufficient for this task. And then to achieve the highest level of accuracy, uh, we usually recommend the use of a survey pole with the GPS uh, mounted on top of the pole. And that's because um, the position that the GPS system is actually measuring is where the antenna is on top of the pole. But by using a fixed height pole and a level bubble on the side of the pole to hold it you know, as, as uh, vertical as you can, that is how the, the position from the GPS antenna gets translated to that point of interest on the ground. And using this type of setup, you can uh, measure the position on the ground to within sort of that one to two centimeter accuracy uh, pretty easily. So now that we have our sort of our, our field solution um, understood in terms of the accuracy that we can use and, and we know what mobile devices we can use and, and the TerraFlex software that runs on it, of course, uh, this, this slide shows um, sort of an overview of the workflow or how the data flows from the different components. So we have our device with our TerraFlex software and, and in this case, we do have a GPS um, uh, an external GPS capability uh, on the system on the left as well. So that's used out in the field to collect um, information about different features. And then the data flows through to our Connect Maps, uh, which is our, our cloud platform. And that is used to, to do basic QA, QC, to check and, and edit data, perhaps consolidate data from different um, users or different sessions out in the field. And then from there, you can export to a number of um, to a number of different uh, or common GIS formats, uh, so that the data can be integrated back into uh, a system of record. So for Esri customers specifically, uh, it's it's the same um, principle, but instead of uh, Connect Maps, 
we have a product called Trimble Positions, which is an add-in for that ArcGIS uh, platform. So it does a lot of the same things as uh, Connect Maps, but it's, uh, it resides within uh, an add-in to the ArcGIS environment, so providing a slightly more direct connection uh, to the data that's, that's in the GIS. The examples that I'm, that I'm going to run through over the next couple of slides, I'm going to talk about Connect Maps, but for ESRI customers, just know that we have a, uh, an add-in for the ArcGIS platform that can, can um, perform a lot of the same functions, but in a more streamlined way. So for the data collection workflow, uh, I've summarized the various steps here, and I'm gonna run through them um, one by one and, and just give you a brief taste of, of how it works and, and what the user interface looks like. But very, very quickly, uh, the workflow starts in Connect Maps, where you build the forms uh, that will then be used out in the field uh, to collect the data. So you build the forms in Connect Maps, you publish those forms out to uh, Terraflex, out to the mobile devices that are being used in the field. And then the uh, folks out in the field using the software on the devices, they collect information about the, the features of interest. And then when the mobile devices are online, that data is synchronized back into Connect Maps, where you can review, uh, do your QAQC, you can edit the data, you can, uh, like I said, perhaps consolidate um, data for, across multiple users, across multiple sessions, and then export it from there into a number of common formats for integration into the system of record. So just to have a quick look at, at uh, or a slightly deeper look at, at uh, this process and, and what the UI looks like. So here we are in Connect Maps, and you can see that there's some data, uh, some point and line data that already exists. Um, here I want to uh, add another layer um, so that you know my, my field workers can go out and, and collect information. And you can see that the data that exists there, uh, there are four layers. One is utility points, the second is vegetation, the third is road features, and the fourth is utility lines. So I wanna go out and collect some information about some street furniture in this case. So I click on the plus button and then select new template. And that opens the template editor. And then the first tab here uh, lets me uh, do some sort of higher level things, I guess, around, around this particular template. So I can set the name, I can set the geometry type, I can set the color um, that it will use when it comes back into, into the map in Connect Maps, which was the previous screen, and then some, some other details as well. So with the cl one click of a button, I uh, fill that out. So I've given it the name Street Furniture. Uh, I've changed the color to blue. Uh, I've kept it as a point feature. Uh, I'm requiring that when the form is filled out in the field that the uh, geometry is collected as well. And then there are some other, some other settings um, down there as well. I think they're fairly self-explanatory. Um, you'll notice you have the opportunity to set a required accuracy. And then since that is uh, below, below a certain threshold, a note pops up telling me that a Trimble device might be required in the field to, to achieve that level of accuracy. So that's the sort of the cover of the, of the template, so to speak. Now I go into the fields tab to actually build the, build the form or, or um, build, the, yeah, build the form for the information or that's gonna prescribe what information I want when it's out in the field. And on the left-hand side, you've got all the different types of fields that you can use. And to build the form, you click on the type of field that you want and drag it across uh, into, uh, into the space on the right here. So you can see the different types of fields that you can use. There are text fields, numeric fields. You can measure lengths, angles. Uh, there are yes, no uh, choices. There are multiple choice uh, fields. You can insert the date. You can read barcodes. You can take images with the camera of your device. You can write on the screen if you want your operator to sign uh, that a, that a, that a uh, you know, feature has been, been collected. Uh, then there are some layout options to, to um, help build a, a, a more, or a template that, that looks nice and is, is easy to use in the field. 
Uh, and then there are what we call some auto field options as well. And these, this is information that the user doesn't enter, uh, but the system automatically records every time a template is, is saved. And that's things like who the operator was, the date that it was uh, recorded, the estimated um, spatial accuracy of the position that is, that is recorded, things like that. So again, just with the click of a button, uh, my template magically appears. So you can see I've uh, dragged over a numeric field and I've called it tag number. So that's going to ask uh, the operator to enter the, the um, ID of the asset or the tag number of the asset when they, when they encounter um, some street furniture in the field. The next field I've dragged across is a multiple choice field and I've called it furniture type. And here I've just listed some of the, you know, some, some things that the uh, field, or field staff might be running into, you know, when they're out collecting the information. There is an other option here. So if I haven't collected, or if I haven't listed everything in the template that, that the um, user is going to encounter in the field, then they have the option to, to uh, enter some text to record, um, you know, information about different features. Uh, and then down below, I've got a yes, no field. Uh, is maintenance on this piece of street furniture needed? And then uh, down below, I've got a, another multiple choice field, which just lists some different types of actions uh, in case maintenance is needed. So that's a very, very simple field. Uh, sorry, very, very simple template, but just shows you how some of the fields can come together in a way that makes sense for, you know, for different um, data collection projects. The next tab is uh, creating some rules. So just to help um, the efficiency with which the templates are used in the, in the field, you can create some, some different um, conditional rules. And just the very simple example I've got here is um, if the operator selects yes on the is maintenance needed question, then the action menu is enabled and they then need to select um, you know, from, the, from the various actions uh, with respect to what type of maintenance is needed. So it's a very, very simple example, um, but it's, it's a way that you can, you can um, uh, make, the, make the forms easier to navigate and easier to use in the field by, by creating some of these types of rules. So next step is to, once the, uh, once the form has been created, you publish that form um, out to uh, Terraflex. And you can see here that um, in the template editor, I hit the publish button and now that street furniture layer uh, exists in my project. So when I hit uh, publish, it also sends it out to Terraflex. So Terraflex users that are in the same project um, now they they have this form, and you can see it on the sh uh, screenshot on the on the left there. There's a street furniture button, uh, and then they can use that to collect information about street furniture. So here are the here are a couple of screenshots from Terraflex. Uh, it's a very very easy application to use in the field. Uh, it is as simple as selecting the project that that you're that you're collecting data for, and then when you're in the project. Uh, there is a map view, uh, but in the in the screen that's on the left there, you can see it lays out uh, the forms that are available to use for collection. So in this instance, I just press on that street furniture button, and then a new form pops up, and I've uh, I populated you know the the various fields there. So I entered a tag number. I said it's a it's a bench. Yes, maintenance is needed, and the action is that it needs to be painted. And you can see that I've also collected um, the location of that record as well with, with very high accuracy in this instance. Yeah, Jonathan, just, just one thing to jump in here that um, um, one, one really interesting and, and really neat feature uh, of Terraflex is uh, actually in the office, you'll set up the uh, any real-time configuration settings, um, which which will be uh, automatically sent down to the field, uh, the field device, and, and TerraFlex in the field. Um, which means that the, the the field user doesn't have to um, doesn't have to configure things like VRS settings um, or uh, or any of the real time configurations in order to achieve that high accuracy. So the idea is that it's very simple for the field users to pick up. 
collect data, and then also collect data with uh, extremely high accuracy without having to know how to configure everything because it's already been done in the office. Good point, Dan. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. So the so the data has been collected in, in TerraFlex now, and when the device um, is either online um, in the field or, or comes back online as you as you you know come back into town or, or into the office, that data is automatically synchronised back into Connect Maps uh, via the cloud. And and what this is showing is that same uh, record in the mobile device in TerraFlex, and then that. Um, record that I collected um, synchronizes with Connect Maps and it, it pops up in the map screen there. And on the right hand side, if I if I click on that feature, then it shows me the details, and I can see the same information that I that I entered when I was in the field. Um, so one of the main sort of tasks uh, that you can use Connect Maps for is to check the data. Uh, so if you can consolidate the data, of course, between users or from different users, from different um, data collection sessions, uh, but then uh, you need to check the data. You need to do the QAQC. So there's a couple of things I can do here. Like if this record is erroneous for whatever reason, then I have the option to delete it. Or if I press the edit button, which I'll, I'll do here, then it opens that form up again. And from the office, I have the chance to uh, to update the information that was that was entered in the field. So I could correct the tag number if that's what was wrong. Um, in this in this form, I didn't add a photo, but if I had a photo and I could see the tag number was wrong, then I could correct the tag number. In this instance. Um, I've, I mean, just for the just for the purposes of this demonstration, I've included, uh, in addition to the bench needing to be painted, the vegetation around the bench also needs to be cleared. So it's just an example of how that how that information can be um, corrected as it comes through the Connect Maps um, platform. Just one, just one more point here, John. Um, that um, while while TerraFlex Mobile synchronizes to uh, a cloud, the cloud using using the internet. TerraFlex Mobile can actually be used in a completely offline uh, manner. So all the all that's required is that the user downloads the project require or the projects uh, and project uh, configurations to the device, and then can go out into the field without any internet connection whatsoever and capture as much data as uh, as he as 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 is necessary. And then when they return to um, uh, the office or, or uh, the house, wherever there's a Wi-Fi connection um, or cellular connection, the data can then be sent uh, sent up. So it can be used either online or offline uh, to get the data between field and office. Thanks, Dan. So the the last step from uh, Connect Maps there is to to export the data so that it can be. Um, can be uh, sent back to or, or or sent to the system of record. Right, so that was the data collection workflow. Uh, there's also an inspection workflow, and I'm not going to go through through this one step by step because it's largely the same, but it really differs by uh, the first couple of points there, and that is, of course, that you've got existing data uh, in your project here. So you've brought data into Connect Maps. And then you select the relevant data, uh, create what we call a to-do or, or create a task, and then you can send that data and that task to um, users out in the field for them to, to take that record into the field, uh, navigate to the, the feature, uh, and then they can update the, the details that are in that record. And then uh, from there, it's, it's similar to what I just showed where the data uh, syncs back into uh, connect maps and then can be sent back to the system of record. So just a few sort of closing comments. Uh, you know, I mentioned that a couple of keys for TerraFlex are, or one of the keys for TerraFlex is its flexibility. So um, the couple of comments that that Dan added there, uh, you know, they they really play to that. So um, it can be used to um, collect data when it's online, but it also supports uh, an offline workflow as well. Um, 
when online, you can be receiving real-time corrections, uh, but it also supports uh, collecting GNSS data for post-processing in the ArcGIS uh, environment as well. Um, and then the final comment there is that uh, in addition to collecting the, the GNSS location, uh, if you can't um, visit a, a point of interest or a feature that you want to collect information about, uh, perhaps it's over the other side of a fence or, or there's a safety issue so you can't, can't get to that feature, then you have the opportunity to connect a laser rangefinder so that you can measure uh, the location of those remote points as well. So that was just a, a reasonably short overview of the TerraFlex system uh, and how it, how it works together with our Trimble Connect um, or Connect Maps platform. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Dan and he can uh, take us through some customer examples. Yeah, thanks, John. We've just got a couple of uh, a couple of examples of some some users in uh, in both North and South America. And the the first one, uh, John, if you'd flip it over to the next slide, there. There we go. Is um, a customer called the Boardwalk Pipeline. Uh, they're based in uh, um, in the Southeast United States. Uh, and this company was before using TerraFlex was using um, a large paper form and a and a uh, and a cumbersome process to to record that information um, both in the field and in the office uh, and decided to use TerraFlex as as primarily as a pen and paper replacement. Um, the biggest reason was that it's uh, it's very simple to train uh, the field users. Uh, most of the users capturing this data are. Um, uh, are, are are very skilled at the, at pipeline work and not so much in uh, in the use of, uh, of technology or devices in the field. So the ease of use uh, for the field users is was critical to them. Um, also critical to Boardwalk was uh, the ability to integrate uh, the data that was captured in the field directly into their proprietary backend systems. Um, so the fact that uh, that that uh, Connect Maps is a cloud application means that uh, they can they could hook up their own uh, their own systems to uh, to to ours and capture the data uh, to pull that data directly into their systems without manual intervention so uh, a massive time savings in the office uh, as well as ease of deployment in the field um, and specifically that uh, that organization has uh, a little over 150 users uh, at the moment uh, but they're they're looking to expand the use of TerraFlex within other disciplines um, inside of that organization. So uh, depth of cover surveys, um, foreign line crossings, uh, those sorts of things are all, uh, are all uh, additional uses for TerraFlex uh, inside their organization. So uh, a big success story for us um, in, the, uh, in the Southeast United States. Um, the second one brings us to our uh, uh, to the neighbors uh, to the north uh, in up in Canada. Um, the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. The, the short the short version is OMNRF. Um, it is a an organization again, obviously focused on natural resource management. Um, the uh, the reason that they went for TerraFlex uh, is uh, was for the the ease of use and and again the ease of deployment. With over 250 users, it's it's difficult to uh, to maintain. Um, Continuity and uh, and fluency with the with the application. So a user's ability to pick up a, the application uh, and learn it himself or herself uh, within uh, within just a few minutes is critical to the success of their operation. And they're capturing all sorts of things from uh, doing fish surveys or forest boundaries. Um, they're mapping invasive species. Um, but they're doing uh, facility as builds, forest road mapping and maintenance. So uh, many different users, many different disciplines, uh, and it's uh, and it's been a, a big success up uh, up there for uh, for that organization up in Canada. And then the the, the final one is uh, um, an organization based down in uh, Brazil, Neo Energia, um, who are using Catalyst to uh, to map uh, the utility infrastructure, uh, and specifically the utility infrastructure engineering. So. When a new uh, new power system uh, component is installed, whether it be a power pole or buried utility, uh, they're capturing the uh, the as-built 
but then they're also using it to uh, to validate the, uh, uh, the the accuracy and completeness of their existing uh, their existing inventories, and they're finding um, quickly and easily that uh, that data can be updated uh, and 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 deployed across the uh, the organization to make uh, to make better uh, better decisions. In that case, uh, Terraflex is is also paired with uh, Trimble Catalyst, and for over 300 users, it means uh, and e again, ease of use and, uh, and ease of deployment are, are critical, and that's uh, those were some of the the, the, the best uh, examples that we could that, uh, that we could come up with for them, and uh, and they've been very uh, very successful with with both Terraflex and Catalyst at uh, at Neo Energy. Thanks, Dan. So just before we, we uh, get into some questions, I just wanted to uh, highlight one of the tools that are available. So anyone uh, on the webinar who is a um, TerraSync customer that might be looking to migrate to TerraFlex and take advantage of some of the, um, some of the things that we've just described, uh, one of the uh, barriers to doing so is how to manage the data dictionary file and, and um, in, a, in an efficient way so that the transition from one solution to the next is is uh, not too painful and, and tedious. There is a what we've called a TerraSync to TerraFlex uh, application that runs on your desktop available and what that does is um, exactly what it sounds like. So you load your um, data dictionary file, then log into your uh, into Connect Maps, and then you select the project within within Connect Maps, and then when you hit upload, it's going to take your data dictionary file and create a series of templates in your Connect uh, project or your Connect Maps project uh, that that um, you know is the, is the same as the data dictionary file that you've been using with the TerraSync software. So it just brings, um, or it, it helps with the efficiency of, of anyone out there that's using TerraSync that might be looking to migrate to uh, the our flagship TerraFlex uh, system. So in summary, just before we get to the questions, um, TerraFlex is the next generation mobile uh, data collection uh, or field application from Trimble. Uh, it's the Two couple of key things. One is the, the flexibility, but the other is that it, it leverages the cloud for convenience and security. Um, and as Dan mentioned, um, you know, the, the whilst it is leveraging the cloud and it offers a lot of benefits, uh, there are, you know, the flexibility provides for uh, offline uh, use and, and workflows as well. I thought the, Dan, the examples that Dan gave um, really helped, I think, understand the ease at which the solution can be deployed across both um, small and large organisations, perhaps that already have a, a large number um, and a mixed fleet of, of mobile devices. The app can simply be, be downloaded and, and folks can start collecting data uh, just using the devices that are already in their pocket. Um, and then again, on that flexibility note, um, you know, it, it re that really is uh, the key for me to the solution. That you know, it's very, very easy to create your own forms, to send those out to the the teams in the field uh, across you know mixed fleets of devices. You know, some folks might be working online, some offline. Um, some people that have a high accuracy requirement, um, you know, they have the options to to receive real time corrections if they're if they're online or or to collect Genesis data for post-processing if they're not. Uh, and then, you know, it's, it's supporting those two workflows that I mentioned, which is data collection and then the inspection workflow where you're taking data from your GIS out into the field for updates. So the um, before we go to questions, the, the last thing I'll do is just point to the website there, terraflex.trimble.com. Uh, there's a lot of information there about the solution. Uh, there are some, I think there's some uh, more uh, different examples on how the technology can be used and there's also a link to our uh, dealer locator too. So if you're interested in learning more about the solution and you would like someone to contact you, uh, then go to that link and, and have a look for our dealer locator and, and, um, and that will 
you know, then you'll have somebody um, reaching out to you in the near future with some more information. So with that, I'll um, put the specification or the data sheet for, uh, for the software up on the screen now, just because um, that's a little bit of food for thought as you're sort of absorbing and, and reflecting on the information that we've discussed. And we'll um, turn it over to questions. Dan, have you had the chance to, to have a look at any whilst we've been going through? I have. Um, one good question that came through is, uh, the, the question about uh, how Terraflex is in comparison to other GIS data collection software, specifically um, ArcGIS Collector, uh, which is an Esri, an Esri product, uh, for those of you who are, from, who are familiar. Um, we see Terraflex as, uh, uh, as not necessarily directly tied to the Esri environment. So uh, where Collector requires uh, an ArcGIS online account, uh, and knowledge about how to set up and configure uh, the back-end systems for Collector. Uh, Terraflex is meant to be entirely flexible so that uh, any user with regardless, regardless of their, um, their savviness with, um, with ArcGIS uh, or the, uh, the Esri online platform can be successful with Terraflex uh, and that translates to the entire team. So, um, Terraflex again is designed as a as a flexible alternative to um, to something like a uh, a more um, Esri centric uh, collection uh, collection workflow. Uh, another thing too is that uh, that isn't just isn't available in Collector is uh, um, the office side configuration of real time real time settings, uh, nor the ability to post process. So uh, Collector doesn't doesn't offer any of those uh, any of those functions. So um, those are uh, those are advantages to uh, to Terraflex uh, for sure. Um, there's a couple of other questions. One other question that came through was about um, can does does Terraflex support uh, the use of uh, laser rangefinders to do offsetting? Um, yes, it does. Uh, it was actually a recent feature that we uh, that we added to Terraflex. Um, we didn't cover it today in, in kind of the overview presentation, but uh, we do support the use of uh, laser technology uh, rangefinders. Um, the 200 series and the 360 series devices are supported uh, on all of our on all of our platforms. So uh, you can capture remote features using Terraflex. Um, and uh, if you uh, if you use Terraflex, you can download it uh, and try it out yourself. If you have a if you have a device. Um, a, uh, or a, a rangefinder, you can you can see that uh, that that functionality in action. Uh, it's actually a fantastic workflow uh, that uh, that many users of uh, of GIS data collection software haven't seen before. It's 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 very flexible, and uh, um, and I encourage you to uh, to check that out. Um, just a couple this of other questions. Sorry, yeah, go, go ahead, John. So I was just going to just going to um, mention another couple here, Dan. I see you've already answered them in the in the in the uh, question and answer box here, but um, just so that everybody can benefit from the answer. One of the questions was, uh, where did we go? Can we add multiple photos to each record or each recorded point? Sorry. So the answer there is yes. Uh, the example that I showed, uh, I didn't include a photo field. Uh, in the template that I created, but you can add a photo field and you can include the option to collect multiple images per record as well. Yeah, and it looks like a couple of other questions coming through about um, using Terraflex to uh, to either navigate or perform stakeout functions. Um, yes, Terraflex does support uh, navigation to features. Uh, it also supports the ability to enter in a coordinate and navigate to it. Um, but at this point, uh, we don't have any dedicated stakeout uh, functionality or or um, or user experience. Uh, that's feedback we've received uh, quite a bit, and uh, and we hope to add that feature, uh, enhance navigation and stakeout functionality to uh, to a future release. Um, so keep uh, keep keep your eyes out for that sort of uh, that sort of functionality. And then another one that's uh, that's come up a couple of times in the questions is um uh this the the ability to support uh custom 
uh, custom coordinate systems or, or local coordinate systems. Um, that functionality is also is also being uh, being developed at the moment, and um, uh, and we'll release it uh, as soon as that uh, that functionality is available. So the, that is uh, that is the next uh, the next big feature and functionality that uh, that you'll see in TerraFlex. So we're we're excited about that one. So there's another question down here. I'm looking at. Um, so how does the handheld unit, uh, the TDC150, so that's the integrated handheld that I mentioned, how does that perform under Canopy with respect to accuracy? So that's a good question, Trent. Um, and it's always it's always a tricky one to answer because um, there are so many factors involved. Uh, I've got quite a long history with GNSS um, in Trimble. And, and that was always a question that we received, how is this product going to perform in this environment? And when you describe the environment, you know, in, in one or two words, it, it usually doesn't provide enough information to be able to answer um, accurately or, or reliably. So um, the thing that I always suggest is just to test. Um, and if you want to, to see a unit and a device in action, then, then we can certainly arrange arrange that. Uh, what I what I would add to that answer is, um, you know, one of the things I think that Trimble Genesis technology has been renowned for over our 40 year history now is the quality and the robustness and the reliability of our Genesis positioning algorithms. So uh, what I what I mean by that is um, all GNSS systems have their limits, um, but if there is a system uh, that will get you into a certain environment or that will work in a certain environment, then, then Trimble is usually uh, at least equal to, to you know, anything else that's out there on the market. So um, I hope that goes some way to answering that question. But certainly the TDC 150 though, it's, you know, it has a very uh, high high grade antenna and receiver integrated into the platform. So um, if I was to compare that with other Trimble products, the R2, for example, then I would expect them to be reasonably comparable, um, you know, in, in whichever environment they're in. Um, there's one one question in here that's uh, that's an interesting one. It's uh, it's about uh, com is it possible to take uh, voice recordings or attach other types of media to um, to data captured in TerraFlex? Um, another feature that we've heard quite a bit of, quite a bit uh, requested for uh, at the moment TerraFlex only supports images to be captured, but in the future we intend to uh, to support things like um, uh, video capture, audio capture. Um, and even potentially uh, standard documents like PDFs and, and and Word documents, that sort of thing. So anything that can be attached to a uh, to a feature. So today only support for uh, for photos at the moment. Um, let's see. There's a and then, up there, Dan, around yeah. the stakeout question that you had before, and the question is, uh, what software can be used for stakeout instead of TerraFlex? The the one that I know of is. Um, if you sort of move over into our, you know, what we sort of call our survey portfolio, uh, then we have a lot of different options uh, in terms of point stakeout there, um, you know, using either high accuracy GNSS or, or some other positioning technologies too. Dan, have you got any other options uh, other than say Trimble Access with, a, with an R12? Yeah, um, there's a um, uh, there's another uh, kind of a hybrid survey GIS application that runs on Android today that we have, and it's a it's an application called Trimble PenMap, uh, and PenMap does have a a, a stakeout uh, a stakeout function um, uh, available in it. Uh, so that would be an, that would be another alternative to something like Trimble Access. Okay, thanks, thanks, Dan. I think conveniently enough, there's actually a webinar uh, for that in the next uh, 24 hours or so from Trimble. So, um, so that would be something to watch out for as well. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, I think just trying to scroll through the last bit of, that are coming on here. Um, Ah, here's a great question from uh, from Nick came in here about is there likely to be the uh, auto fields or the metadata fields that uh, 
that display the um, the X Y Z or the lat long and altitude um, in the in the form. Uh, yes, that's uh, that's also something that'll be uh, that'll be coming. That's uh, a feature that uh, that some uh, some uh, some number of users have been asking for. So uh, it's something that we can we can fairly easily add to it, and you'll see that feature come uh, at some point here in uh, in the future. And then I think maybe one final question here, Jonathan, um, and uh, it's it's pretty specific. Uh, it's about how how users of Manifold GIS uh, might use TerraFlex to to bring data into that. And I'll I'll answer that question in in kind of a generic fashion, where uh, the outputs from from Trimble uh, from Trimble TerraFlex are are designed to be generic at the moment, um, but we are looking at uh, at ways to integrate with uh, with other third-party applications, uh, which include things like QGIS, uh, Manifold GIS. We, of course, have a plug-in for Esri systems. Um, but uh, we expect that the exports that are available now uh, will, be, uh, will be at least portable between uh, those third-party systems. So something like a, a shapefile or a CSV file uh, can be brought into something like Manifold uh, at the moment. Um, but uh, but we'll, we'll, we're looking at ways to, to more more directly integrate with systems like that. Very good. So thank you, uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, there were, I think, a couple of questions uh, in the list there that we we didn't get to, but we'll uh, we'll send you some more information via via email. Um, in the next couple of days, and, and on the screen now, I'll just leave it there for for another thirty seconds or so after we we um, sort of stop talking. But I've just got uh, the contact details for Dan and myself on the screen. So um, of course, if you've got any follow up questions um, or you know would like to learn more about the technology, then please feel free to uh, contact either of us. So thank you everyone for attending, and again, thank you Dan for um, for the session today. My pleasure, thank you.